Moving on, we're going to start learning about array operations and one of the coolest concepts in NumPy called broadcasting. Let's start this lesson off by creating two arrays. The first one's going to be called first because my imagination is wild and that's going to contain one, two, and three. Then the second one is going to be called second. And this will contain the values of four, five, and six. Next, let's try to add both of these together. So here we're going to print first plus second. And what we should get as an output is the data being added together element wise. And what that means is that one was added to four, two was added to five, and three was added to six. So that's how we ended up with five, seven, and nine. This also works naturally for all the other operators. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to duplicate this a few times and I'm going to add the subtraction symbol, the multiplication symbol, the division symbol, and the power operator. And when we run this, what we should get as an output are all of these operations being performed element-wise. So for subtraction, we're subtracting four from one, five from two, and six from three. And that gives us negative three for each one of these operations. Then it does the same thing for multiplication, division, and also when it uses the power but we can also use special methods to get the sum of arrays of any dimensions. For example, here we might have a matrix, which will equal a NP array, and that's going to contain one, two, and then three and four. Right now, if we were to print this matrix, we'd end up with this matrix over here. If we were to print the sum of this matrix, what we would end up with is the sum of 10 because it added all of these elements together. Optionally, we can also specify an axis. If we specify the axis to be zero, it's going to add the elements vertically. So one plus three and two plus four. If we specify the axis to be one, it's going to do it horizontally. So one plus two and three plus four. And we can also do this with multiplication by using the product method. So right now, if we were to run this, we would get 24 as a product because one times two is two, two times three is six, and six times four is 24. But again, we can specify an axis, such as the axis of zero, and it will multiply it vertically. Up next, it's time we talk about broadcasting. There are going to be times when you're going to want to perform operations between arrays of two different sizes. For example, we might have some data, which will equal NP array of one, two, and three. And we might want to multiply each one of these elements by three. So to do that, we're going to create a multiplier because this can be any number, which will be of type integer, and we're going to insert three. Next, we're going to print the data times the multiplier. And obviously you did not have to create a whole new variable for this. You could also just insert three and that would work as well. But when you run this, you'll notice that it multiplied each element by three. And then it returned to us a new array with the result. If we change this to four, it's going to multiply each element by four. Even if the data has more dimensions, such as this matrix over here, which will contain one and two and three and four. NumPy will still understand how to multiply this. It will multiply each element in this matrix by four. And the NumPy documentation defines broadcasting as a mechanism that allows NumPy to perform operations on arrays of different shapes. The dimensions must be compatible though, otherwise you will get a value error. For example, we're going to use the same data over here, but this time we're going to pass in a 2D array that contains the values of two and three. Or to be honest, we need to change this to a NumPy array first and remove this type annotation. Now this is going to work because the dimensions are compatible. As you can see, when we run this, it's going to be able to multiply one by two and two by three. Then on the next one, it's going to multiply three by two and four by three. And that's how we ended up with this result. This makes sense to NumPy. We have exactly two elements to multiply for each element in the original NumPy array. Now, if we were to add a third element in here, this would no longer make sense to NumPy because right now we're multiplying one by two and two by three, but what are we going to multiply by four? There is nothing to multiply there. For this to work, each element in the original data is going to have to contain three elements like that, then it will work. 
but if we multiply it like this, it's going to raise a value error because the shapes were incompatible. Now, before we conclude today's lesson, there are a few more useful operations that I'd like to cover. So for our next example, I'm going to create an array of ages. And you'll probably see these being used a lot in NumPy and they are all quite straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is refer to ages and get the max value back for the ages. And right below that, we're going to get the min back. Then we're going to get the sum, the mean, the product, and the standard deviation. Now, when we run this, we're going to get a lot of useful information back. The first value is going to be the maximum value in the array. The second one will be the minimum value in the array. Sum is going to return the sum of all the elements in the array, which is going to end up being 216. Then for the mean, we will end up with 27. And this returns the average of the array. Then we get the product of all the elements of the array when we use the product method. And finally, we get the standard deviation using the STD method. So that was quite straightforward with a simple array. But let's create a matrix that's a bit bigger. So here we will create some data, which will equal an NPA range from one to 17. And we're going to reshape that into a four by four grid. Now, when we print this data, it's going to look like this. First of all, we're going to print the max value of this data. So data.max. And when we run this, what we're going to get as an output is 16. But something else we can do is specify an axis. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this twice and specify an axis for each one of them. So axis zero and axis equals one. Now, when we run this, what you should notice is that by defining an axis, we're getting the max value for each column when it is set to zero. When we set the axis to one, we're getting the max value for each row. So that's how we ended up with these two arrays. This is the max value of each column and this is the max value of each row. And you can choose an axis for each and every one of these methods if that's what you want to do. By specifying the axis to be one for each one of these methods, it's going to know that we're requesting the data back from each row instead of from the whole matrix. If we change the axis to zero, it's going to know that we want the data back from each column. 